uh, Scotty McIntosh uh, from the Yard Athletics in Four Ways. He also trains us in, in Pretoria at, T, at the CIT Performance Institute. He is brilliant from our weight cut to our strength and conditioning. Coach Scotty Mack, he's sitting in the crowd. Thank you so much. Uh, big credit to him, for, especially for this five-rounder. Cameron, we've spoken a bit on, on a few exchanges about maturity and keeping yourself composed in there. You know, you came out guns blazing in the beginning of your career, and it's just been so incredible to see the change in you and the maturity that you showed today um, when you were down by two rounds to bring yourself back, compose yourself, and then go about your work. What has changed in your thought pattern uh, to get you to that point? It's really a thing of you are like, the closest people around you and again i'm going to give credit to to my team and my coaches because we really were looking for a finish i was actually quite disappointed that i couldn't get it um, we faced a lot of adversity in the fight we faced a lot of adversity in the training camp was sick for 10 days with minimal training fractured um, knuckles uh, all of that happened in one training camp for this fight so a lot of adversity during the whole training camp. So a little bit of adversity during a fight, we can push through it and, and that's credit to the team again. Like, um, yeah, I, I owe a lot to them. So the, I think if we look at past champions that have come through the ranks and Bantamweight, uh, middleweight and um, welterweight and so forth is, you know, we always look for guys who could be a star or has that quality and I think you somebody that has that. I think you got a great opportunity to carry South African MMA forward. You know, you fall under the, the tutelage of of a great champion that's gone on to the UFC and in, in Drickus. How do you see you yourself now at a very young age being a role model to those around you? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, we do that almost every single day. We have a massive kids program at, at Team CIT uh, where we have almost 120 kids. And uh, I, I run that program um, at Team CIT, and it's a big passion for me. You know, if, if small kids come to the events and watch the fights, I was a small kid when I watched the fights for the first time. So it is really a big part of why we also are going to do the fundraiser for Sandile in his hometown, and as well as my hometown as well, to raise some money for underprivileged children so we can really help them out and make a difference. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. As questions for Sindile. Sindile, what did you learn today? Because we're talking about you coming back stronger from that loss. But what did you learn? You had those two rounds. What changed and what did you gain from this loss? Um, it is what it is, man. Um, in this game, uh, if you don't take your chances, um, you lose. I, I, had, uh, I had chances to, to finish the fight in the first two rounds, but I uh, didn't take those chances. So I, pay, I paid for it. Uh, I feel like even in the last round, I could have uh, stalled the, the fight in the last round, but unfortunately, uh, uh, I couldn't do it. But um, now uh, we're going to go back to Growing Board and um, work for the next fight. Hopefully, I'll get uh, a fight in the next two months again, because I don't want to stay long. I want to stay active. Uh, and then... I'm thinking of um, taking a uh, take off for two weeks and focus on, uh, on on the program that I want to run for my school as well uh, with Cameroon and, and plan and plan for it. Uh, and then in the third week, uh, I'm sure I'll get back uh, get back to training and push out again. But I want to get back on the cage as soon as possible. Uh, Graham, please uh, get someone Absolute for me. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. I'll, I'll never never deny you a fight, but it's a pleasure to watch. Yeah. And I know it didn't go your way tonight, but man, you are incredible. You're an incredible athlete, incredible person, and, uh, and we, we support you 100% in whatever you want to do, bud. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sandile, um, you know, humble in victory and humble in loss, and I think that's testament to Chris Bright and the program that he runs and how he manages his fighters. I, you know, I think it's small adjustments that needed to be made, from my opinion, and um, uh, where do you see those adjustments? Where do you think you need to change and be a little bit better to come back and, you know, have another crack at the title? Uh, 
to be honest, I don't really know. Uh, Chris Bright is the, is the brain of, uh, of, of our team. So uh, I'm sure he saw uh, what went wrong. So he'll work on it. Uh, I think we did everything we could uh, to prepare for this fight. But it's unfortunate things didn't go on our way. Like I said, uh, I had chances to finish the fight earlier. But um, unfortunately, I couldn't do that. So um, I think I'll, I'll blame myself for that. Uh, we prepare very well for this fight. Um, I just want to say, uh, it's, it's funny because we, we look at Cameron and Sandelia as athletes and a lot of the times when, when athletes hype their fights, it's always awesome, you know, like you think about all the trash talk and the things that happen. These guys haven't said a stitch against one another and they've made it as exciting as it could possibly be. And I think that they carry who they are, they, their truth of who they are through their fight careers and, and whatever they do. And that's why people are enamored with them. People want to watch them fight. They want to follow their careers. And whatever Cindy decides to do, Next, you know, he'll get all of our support in the MMA community. We want to see him fight again soon. Ask questions again back for you, Graham. Um, Cindy Lay's teammate, flyweight champion, Latando Biko, is looking for a dance partner. On tonight's evidence, Magno Alves looks pretty tasty. What's, what's the plan? So, it, it's so strange. Watching that fight, um, you know, in the last round, you would have said, is, is Magno going to come out of that? And uh, I turned to the guy sitting with me and I said, look, if we give Magno a full camp, if we give him every opportunity, when he shows up and we give him the opportunity to fight for a title, we are going to see a barn burner. I think he's got it in him. He's got the cardio, got the skill, got everything. I would love to match Magno and, uh, and Lutando Biko in a flyweight title. I would love to see that fight happen. I just think it's exciting. It's a hell of an exciting fight. Uh, this question is for Nico Yamji. Uh, Nico, uh, welcome back, sir. The lion returns. Thank you, thank you. Um, just a moment, there was a moment that Shalto seemed to rock you, and something I saw that was quite different in your past fights, um, the way you shifted and showed some patience, that credit to um, your coach, and just tell us exactly, are you with Coach Neville, Adonel, and Angelo, and is, uh, Coach Portelli, is he your full-time coach? What's exactly the relationship there? Uh, thank you, thank you for, for that question. Uh, I trained with Nivel and Angelo for the kickboxing and boxing, and they always push me hard also for, for training. And with the, my, coach, uh, my coach for Jiu Jitsu, Jack Botelin, we train Jiu Jitsu all the time and we, we push very hard. And the last time we were supposed to fight, but with the, uh, the fight get cancelled, it, it gave me an opportunity, opportunity again to work more hard. So it was very great. So, yeah. I've seen this guy. I, we live we're in the same neighborhood, so I see him quite often. And whenever I see him training, um, he's, he, he runs around like a welterweight. He's skipping, his cardio is on point. There's so much potential locked up in Nico, and we just need to give him the right opponents. To, to make that happen. So I think he's got a chance to go all the way to the top. He just needs the right fights to get him there, really. I really, I really need that, uh, Graham. Uh, the last time uh, I lost that fight with the G, uh, Jikasa, Triple H, for me, I know it was not a loss, but I want him back. If he, you can rematch that match, me and him again, I'm sure I'm going to show you something. Awesome, mate. We'll so, work on something nice for you, I promise. Yeah. Thank you. Um, question for Popeye. Are you going to translate? <laughs> Popeye, that was one of the craziest fights we've ever seen to come back like that. I mean, he was, like he was on his way to winning that oh, fight. How much did you learn from that? And was this one of the most amazing fights that you've ever been in? Eu preciso é, melhorar bastante por conta do, da altitude, muito frio. Onde eu estava treinando, é, eu estava treinando sozinho, com a minha garra, com o coração, e não tinha ninguém para me ajudar. Mas agora eu vou ficar aqui, aqui, aqui até agosto e estou esperando alguma oportunidade para lutar novamente. July, 
Agosto. It says he'd like um, an opportunity to fight between July and August, and uh, he'll be a lot more prepared. The preparation uh, was affected by mainly the fact that he was training by himself. He, he didn't really have a, a proper camp, and the altitude also affected his fitness. So in terms of the area of improvement, he, he believes the main factor was really the altitude and, and he, he'll show his real, his, his real colors once he's, he's here. He has a, a full camp. So can we, can, we, can we do something quickly? Magno, the idea is for you to fight uh, Lutanda Biko. I mean, that's what we all want to see. Why don't we do a face-off with you and Lutanda here? Yeah. He's here. He's been supporting his teammate. This dude in the front here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Epic. That's going to be incredible. Thank you, champ. Uh, Mr. Mr. Stein, first of all, it's always a pleasure hearing your walkout song. It's always oh, nice to be in the, in the, in the arena when you, when you walk out. 2 and O oh now, just tell us exactly, is there anybody specific you're looking for to fight next, or are you just enjoying every minute of it? No, I'm not, I'm not uh, someone to call out anyone. Uh, I'm open for any fight. Any fight Graham and the matchmakers want to give me, I'll take it. Uh, hopefully, if, uh, if my weight cut goes good, I'll go down to lightweight. Um, but yeah, I was scheduled for lightweight. But then with my knee up and everything, I couldn't get my weight down. So I fought another welterweight fight. I'm actually a... a a lightweight belt, so I'm gonna try and get down. Uh, anyone, anyone, I don't care who I fight, I'll fight anyone. Yeah, um, Mr. Sita, don't, don't sleep on us there. Hey, hey listen, Emmanuel, let hey, me tell God. you something. <laughs> you were on this list for me for a performance bonus because stepping up to the main card in the, in the bright lights and uh, pulling off that you. TKO was epic. Well done, well done. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Sita, last time you, you didn't get the win but in your last fight, but you got obviously the, the Prestonic bed. Are you going to sleep much better tonight? <laughs> I believe so, yeah. Um, just like I say uh, on Friday, you know, for me that fight wasn't actually uh, lost. It was a kind of like a lesson. And uh, this fight um, meant a lot to me because first of all, the first opponent drive got me. Uh, is it pull out? So when my, my coach told me, now listen, your opponent pull out, what about the guy from Ghana? I told him, listen, I'm a fighter. I have something to prove. So anyway, you put anyone you put in front of me, I'll be fighting him. So, so getting it to win is not like something, it was for me surprise, but um, I work hard. So for me, it means a lot. And because I had to prove it, you know, you, you know me from long time as an amateur, so my first debut in EFC was, uh, like I said, it wasn't a loss, but it was a lesson, and uh, there's a long way to go, so along the way, I will keep fighting, learning, so yeah, but I'm so, so happy and blessed for that. Thank you for your question. Uh, it's questions for Cameron. Cam, the, w the word is there's discussions about the contender for your belt. Could possibly either be in Kazimola Zulu or Gian Sousa. Um, what do you make of either of those p possible opponents and who would you like to face? Yeah, any, any one of them is, will be fine. Um, we'll obviously go back to the drawing board. Um, I'm, not, I'm not particularly happy with my performance in tonight's fight. Um, although it went great, it went well, uh, we wanted a finish. And, um, but I first need to go watch the whole fight because in the fourth round I 
couldn't even remember if it was the third or the fourth. So um, I was really quite confused. But um, I'll, I'll go watch the full fight, chat to my coaches, chat to Jikas, and then we'll, then we'll decide, okay, wh what dates are we looking at and who's available for that date? And then we'll call Uncle Graham here. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hilarious that he's pulling off all those crazy moves and he doesn't know what round it is. <laughs> like, I mean, insane, insane. Um, Graeme Gottmel, there's... There's one, um, Sylvester Chapumbu in the house, former EFC Bantamweight champion. And he spoke of possibly taking another fight in the EFC to remain active until his next assignment, possibly in the UAE. Any chance of you matching him up with Cameron Simon? Look, we love, we love Sylvester. You know, there's, uh, he's an incredible athlete. He, what he did for EFC and becoming a, a champion was prolific. So I'm always happy to match him. We had a nice conversation tonight about him coming to fight for us. We do exactly that with Faiz. We manage Faiz. He's in UAE. We're happy to have Sylvester to come, come and fight here. I mean, the fans want him. Okay. And that concludes EFC 94. Before we say, before we say our, uh, our dues, uh, Sindile just wants to give this to Kami. Yeah, um, I would like to hand over this uh, cap and uh, my workout short uh, to Kem. Uh, Kem, I'm grateful for what you are doing for our kids uh, in Kabea family. Amazing. Thank you for a Thank you, brother. Okay. And that concludes EFC 94's post-event press conference. Catch us for EFC 95. Iga Kabeza, Nerik Simos. What a banger that's going to be. EFC 95 features an electrifying featherweight title fight between South Africa's Iga Cabeza and Angola's Nerik Samoz. Headlining an event with some of the fiercest athletes from across the world. EFC 95, 16th of July. Broadcast details at EFCWorldwide.com.